Hi, I'm Lisa. Welcome to my channel. If you're thinking about painting a watercolor painting on a bigger format and you feel a little bit overwhelmed and don't know where to start, then this video is for you. Today I want to take you into the process of how I painted my first big watercolor portraits. And it's so different from painting small and I love it so much and this is why I want to share it with you. Since I started painting portraits with 15, I've been dreaming about creating big portraits and showing them in an art exhibition. But until this year I didn't feel quite ready for that because I didn't really know what my own art style was and I didn't want to waste the money for a painting where the chances are high that I won't be satisfied at the end. But in the beginning of the year I would say I finally had a breakthrough when it came to my own art style and it all started with this painting. I did it for a painting challenge on Patreon and I stepped way out of my comfort zone in trying to use a blue underpainting. Using an underpainting is an interesting and helpful technique where you start a painting with mapping out the different values with only one color. I wanted to use blue for the shadows, which I expected to be very difficult for painting a face. But I wanted to give it a try and did this painting in a very relaxed mood and with low expectations. For me it was just a piece to experiment with. And I was so surprised by the outcome. I love this portrait and I still do. The underpainting made the portrait so much more interesting and artsy and I felt like I finally found my own art style and that gave me the confidence to dare painting bigger portraits. It goes a bit more preparation into painting bigger formats compared to painting small and I would say the better you are prepared, the easier and more enjoyable the process will be for you. Therefore, I will tell you now how I did prepare myself. It is important that you like the reference picture you choose a lot, because it takes longer to finish a bigger painting. And in order to stay motivated, it's good to have a reference picture that excites you and therefore you just have to paint it. For this series, I took some pictures of my daughter. The first one just happened by accident. I wanted to take pictures of her for another idea I had in mind, but she was so active and was jumping up and down a lot. Later, as I looked at the material, there was this one picture I fell in love with and I just had to paint it. After that, I recreated the photo shoot and let her jump up and down and dance again. And this is how I got the reference pictures for this series. Then I edited the pictures in Procreate in order to create the composition that I wanted to have. The great thing is that in this program, I could swap some arms and hands until I was satisfied with the reference. And then I did some color grading in Adobe Lightroom to come as close to the painting I envisioned it as I could. The papers I used were single sheets of Arches watercolor paper. They are 56 by 76 centimeter or 22 by 30 inch large. And with 640 gram per square meter, they are quite heavy, which is really good. And they are 100% cotton. And I choose hot pressed paper because for portraits, I like working on a very smooth surface. And the paper cost me around 12 euro per sheet. I tried it for the first time and I was super happy with it. Because it's so heavy and stays flat even if you paint with a lot of water like I do. I also bought some bigger brushes in order to fill out larger areas faster. And my favorite brand is Da Vinci. It's a German brand because I am German. And I got these brushes in the sizes 
10, 12 and 24. And I have two palettes for my brushes and I use this one because the bigger brushes fit in very well in this large things, <laughs> in this large areas. I don't know. And for this series I stuck to a very limited color palette because I like to challenge myself to get the most out of just a few things. My favorite watercolor paint brand is Schminke because it's the best here in Germany and they are of such a high quality. It's also a good idea to have a blow dryer close to you because when you have big areas that are very wet, it could be difficult to find a place to lay your hand down and then it's good when you quickly can blow dry some parts. Finding a place where I could paint comfortably on this big format was a bit challenging. I didn't want to put it on an easel because as I mentioned I work with a lot of water and I didn't want it to run down all the time. So I moved my desk into the middle of the studio in order to have access from all sides. This one is such an important step for me. Before I start painting, very often I do some little studies before. It just gives me more security because I have some guidance regards to the color choices and the values. Especially when you paint big, I would highly recommend to do a quick sketch before to map out the colors and values. It gives you a clearer vision of what you want to create and you won't waste the big expensive paper because your colors don't fit together or something like that. I know it's a little bit more work but believe me it will help you a lot in the process. Okay let's go into the process of painting the big portrait. Honestly, in the beginning I was a little bit scared because I didn't know if I could handle this big format or if I would just ruin the paper. And it was so unfamiliar because everything was bigger. But after a while I really got into the flow and really enjoyed the process. So let's go into it. After getting the outlines on paper, which I will show you in another video how to do that easier, I pre-mixed all the colors I needed for the painting. The little sketches gave me a good reference for that. First, I didn't realize how much more paint was necessary to paint bigger. So you will need a lot more than you might think and it's good to mix it before starting so you don't run out of paint while you are in the middle of covering a large part. For the first layer, I wet the area I wanted to paint on with water. That helped me to spread out the paint evenly and avoid some unwanted harsh edges. Because sometimes when I am not careful while I'm painting on one end, on the other the edges are already drying and then the color doesn't blend in anymore. I would also recommend to cover up some parts you are not working on because it can happen that accidentally some paint will drop or sprinkle on the paper and it's a bit safer that way. I just take ordinary pieces of paper for that. A little bit difficult for me was to keep the whole painting in focus. It's so easy to get lost in one corner and neglect the other. And because at the beginning I didn't work on an easel, I couldn't step back and watch it from a distance. So I had to step on a chair many times in order to get an overview over the painting to see what I was doing. But after figuring out all of this, I really got into a flow and it was so much more fun than painting small.
Later, when I knew I would focus more on the details and didn't use so much water, I put the paintings on an easel. It helped me to keep an eye on the whole painting. I really enjoyed painting these first three paintings of the series. I love working with bigger brushes and how good you see the structure of the paint. And I also like that the small features like the mouth, the nose or the nails suddenly become more visible. After painting on bigger formats, I didn't want it to go back on painting small, but go even bigger than that. So maybe one day I will do that. For me, it is so satisfying to look at a big watercolor painting because it has such a strong presence in the room and you can just sit in front of it and absorb the painting and see all of the details. And yes, this is why I love painting big so much and I hope I could give you some motivation and encouragement to start painting bigger and yes we are at the end of this video and I hope you enjoyed it and learned something and if you did then please give it a like and if you're new here then subscribe for more videos if you have any questions just drop them in the comments I would love to hear from you see you in the next video Bye!